There's a cold war brewing that the average consumer is unaware of. In every sector of consumer technology, there are contenders fighting for our dollars and our data. This includes smartphones, TVs, microwaves, refrigerators, you name it. And today, a new challenger has appeared. Its name, the Google Home Hub. Too dramatic? Yeah, I think so. In the fight for your living room, there are a few major players. Google, Amazon, and Apple being the big three. And today we're going to be looking at the Google Home Hub, a direct rival to the Amazon Echo Show. Now we don't have the Amazon Echo Show with us, but we're going to try and do our best to cover the Home Hub so you can decide for yourself if this is the right device for you. The Google Home Hub is Google's latest in their line of home devices. It sits alongside the Google Home Max, the Google Home, and of course the Google Home Mini. And just like its siblings, the Google Home Hub is tied to your Google Assistant, which is apparently a bit smarter than before. So first off, let me show you what we got in the box. Available only in the US, UK, and Australia at the moment. Wait, Canada isn't even on the list. Hello darkness, my old friend. Yeah, it's not even on the list, but I jumped over the border and grabbed one for myself because you, Google. The Home Hub can be purchased for 150 US dollars. And like all of Google's products, the Home Hub is just as minimalistic in its packaging. It includes the Home Hub, a power brick and cable, and of course, the instruction booklet. The unit itself is surprisingly quite small. I was really expecting it to be a bit bigger. The woman at Best Buy who rung it up told me it was cute. What, is, what does that even mean? So instead of getting your kid a puppy for Christmas, get them a Google Home Hub. To put it into perspective, we have it here next to an iPhone. Aw, now I see what she means. Yeah, no, I, I still don't. I prefer this size because it pretty much fits anywhere, including my cramped night table. On the back of the device, you will find a power input, which is surprisingly not USB-C. Weird move, Google. Seeing as how you went micro USB with the Home Mini. Anyway, we got the volume rocker and a mic mute toggle as well. The unit rests on a base that tilts the screen ever so slightly, and buyers can choose between pink, black, white, and baby blue. Some people may find the screen a bit too small, but this is subjective. Google tries to make up for this by displaying larger fonts and icons throughout. I for one don't mind the size of the display at all. It's small enough that it blends into a room while also being an adequate size to make use of that display. One downfall I find with this speaker slash display is that it's not waterproof. Now, I know what you're thinking. Jer, you idiot, you're not swimming with this thing. Yeah, I know, but hear me out. There are several use case scenarios I can find for having this thing in the kitchen and maybe a couple in the bathroom as well. But my point being is, in these specific areas of the house, it's going to increase the likelihood of coming into contact with water. I mean, Sonos made their first generation speaker water resistant, because they know I love to listen to music while I'm in the shower. Prop Sonos, you the real MVP. For those of you who have seen our Google Home Mini review, setting everything up is just as painless. Just plug it in, download the Google Home app on your Android or iOS device, find your Google Home Hub, connect it, and you're pretty much good to go. You also have visual confirmation on the device itself to guide you through the setup process. From start to finish, it only took about a few minutes to get everything up and running. Feature-wise, you have everything you had before. All the same voice commands will work, with the addition of having a 7-inch touch display, which automatically shows off your Google Photos and Home View at a glance. An interesting thing to note is that while the Amazon Echo Show has a built-in camera, the Google Home Hub omits this. 
This was probably a good idea to quell any kind of privacy concerns out there, but it already has a mic included, which can be physically disabled. Why not just give us a camera, but give us the option to physically disable that as well? In any case, I'm not really gonna miss it, and Google decided to cram a light sensor in lieu of the camera, which is actually quite useful. The light sensor enables the device to automatically adjust its brightness settings whenever it detects a dark room as well as change the color temperature and face of the display. Google has coined this feature Ambient EQ. In real world use, it's actually pretty handy if you keep the Google Home Hub in your bedroom. Once it gets dark, the screen will automatically change itself into a clock, as well as dial down the light output to avoid obnoxiously shining light in your eyes when you're trying to sleep. There are two last things I want to talk about in terms of the hardware before I move on to the software. If you're buying this for its multimedia capabilities, you might be a bit disappointed. It's not a bad device for watching videos or listening to music, but it's also not great. The small 7 inch display, while quite sharp, is too tiny to watch anything for an extended period of time. YouTube was perfectly fine for some time, but my eyes inevitably got fatigued when watching a movie. The speakers on the other hand are pretty bad. It's loud enough to fill a small room, but it's very flat. My Google Home Hub actually sounds a lot better than this, and I don't know why Google downgraded the speaker quality in this one, especially when you can do more multimedia activities on it, like watching videos. All right, now let's talk about Google Assistant. It's probably the best AI assistant out there. And with the new Google Home Hub, it only gets better. My house has a Google Home on almost every floor, either a Google Home or a Google Home Mini. And now added to that is the Google Home Hub. The best part about going with Google's smart home ecosystem is its ability to work with over 5,000 smart devices from companies such as LG, Belkin, Sony, Philips, just to name a few. We will put a link down below to a list of all the devices it works with, but that list is growing every day. Home control is great and the visual display makes it a bit more aesthetically pleasing. For example, when I'm turning on the lights, you'll now see a visual confirmation that the hub has followed through with your request. Not only that, but drag down from the top of the screen and you have access to all your home controls. However, I need to mention that there's really no status indication afterwards that shows you in real time if your device is on or off. That's a pretty huge omission for something that's as important as home controls. Swiping over to the left will give you access to media content as well. If you want the best smart home hardware to go with your Google Home Hub, then the Nest family will give you plenty to play with. Nest products range from security cameras, doorbell video systems, Systems, smart thermostats, as well as keyless locks. The coolest part about this is that both the security cameras and the doorbell video can be streamed directly to the home hub as a live feed, with the camera being controllable through either voice or the UI. Speaking of controlling things on the home hub, the voice recognition and the device's ability to search for information can be somewhat hit or miss. I don't think that's necessarily Google's fault though. Information on the internet is scattered everywhere across many websites and services. And most of the time I found it was far easier to find what I was looking for on my computer instead of on the Google Home Hub. This will improve with time, but for now, it's one of the few flaws of the device and the ecosystem. It is also important to realize that this is the case for AI assistants in general. They aren't perfect yet and still need a few more years to mature. So do I recommend the Google Home Hub? If you just recently started thinking about home automation, then absolutely. Even if you're not a smart home enthusiast, this thing proves useful in places such as the kitchen when you need visual instructions for recipes or just wanna to listen to music while cooking. The Home Hub is one of the best options out there and it won't break the bank. It integrates very well with its partner products, but even if you don't have any smart devices controlling your home, the Home Hub is not a half bad digital picture frame or even a desk side clock. It can play movies, music, show your calendars, reminders, weather, the list goes on. It can't do video chat like its rival, the Amazon Echo Show, due to not including a camera, but in the age of smartphones, tablets, and laptops that all have front facing cameras, I don't really think that matters at least not to me. Well, that's it guys. Is the Google Home Hub something you're planning on getting or something you already have? Do you have a further question on the Google Home Hub? Let us know down in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, or give it a gentle tap.
Either way, make sure it knows you're there so you don't miss another video. If you guys want to check out any extra content from us or just want to join our Team Tech Venture community, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at The Tech Vengers. It's been a pleasure, guys. Like always, I'm Jer the Tech Venger. Don't forget, when it comes to tech, The Tech Vengers are there. We got your back.